Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday's Words of Wisdom, where we take a word in the Bible, try to expand on a little bit, because you can learn a lot. Um, I taught high school kids for 10 years, years ago, four decades ago. Uh, first of every class, I try to pick a word. Just tell three or four scriptures about, you know, what the Bible says about this word. Well, today we're doing it now on this, and it's like, I'm trying to find seven, eight, ten scriptures to let you know this word means something. Every word in the Bible means a lot. Though so you like to meditate on it, you know, if you meditate on the word day and night, you'll prosper have good success. So even simple words got deep meaning. So today, the word we're working on today is called run, R-U-N. You know, can you run fast or run far? You know, so it's a great word, the word run. So Psalm 143, verse 9, most all these scriptures are from the New Living Translation. If there was some other translation, I'll let you know. But most of these are from the New Living Translation. Psalm 143, verse 9, rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I run to you to hide me. Who do you run to? I'm running to God. Because God's good all the time. He won't turn you away. He won't turn you back. You know, come boldly to the throne of grace to get mercy to help in time of need. So I like that word, run. I'm going to run you, God. Proverbs 4, 12. Proverbs 4, verse 12. When you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you will not stumble. That's a promise of the people of God. When you run, you will not stumble. I like that. That's a good promise. When you run, you will not stumble. Proverbs 18, verse 10. Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run into him and are saved. The godly run to him. Godly run to God. I run to God and I'll be saved. I run to God, I'll be saved. Where's safety? In God. I'll run to God and I'll be saved. Oh, that's good. Proverbs 28, verse 1. Proverbs 28, verse 1. The wicked run away when nobody is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as a lion. The wicked run even when nobody's chasing them. Why? Because they have guilt. You know, fear, and it'll make you run. But the godly, the godly are as bold as a lion. I like that. No matter, man, nothing runs from a lion. A lion, lion chase everything away. A lion's not afraid of anything. It's like, I'm bold as a lion. I like this, Proverbs 29, verse 18. Proverbs 29, verse 18. When people do not accept divine guidance, God's trying to lead me all the time. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Who runs wild? People that won't listen to God, people that don't obey God, people that aren't reading God's word. They're running wild. Why? They have no direction. They're not listening to the voice of God. He, he's not ordering their steps to direct their paths. They're directing their own path, and they're running everywhere. Why? They run wild, the Bible says. They run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Where does joy come from? Obeying God. <laughs> Why? God's going to work all things out to my good. He promised me. If I make mistakes, God's going to work everything out for my good. Well, that's a good way to live every day. I love that. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 9, 11. I observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner does not always win the race. The strongest warrior does not always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. The skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It's all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. Well, who's in the right place at the right time? Those whose steps are ordered by God. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm going to read that one more time. you got to let that get into it. It's a great passage in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. I observe something else under the sun. The fastest runner that does not always win the race. Whoa. The strongest warrior does not always win the battle. Mm -mm. The wise sometimes go hungry. Oh, that's kind of a scary thought. The skillful are not always wealthy, and those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It's all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. Well, who's that? Godly people. Well, it doesn't look right. Yeah, but it is. God's leading you, and he's guiding you, he's directing you. Well, this doesn't look like a good place. Yeah, but it's God's place. The best place you'll ever be is in God, in him, in whom, in Christ. Tell my kids, it's not the place you're at. It's who you are in him, in Christ. You in Christ, you got it made. You're going to be good. 
Isaiah 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they'll not faint. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll run and not grow weary. It's the word run we're doing today. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and they'll not faint. I like that. Romans 5, verse 3. Romans 5, 3. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. We know that they help us develop endurance. We can rejoice when? When we run into problems and trials. I'm going to be happy. Yeah, what you run into? Problems and trials. Do I need to be happy? Yeah, you need to be happy. You run into problems and trials. You need to be happy. Why? They're going to teach you to develop endurance. Because <laughs> God's not going to abandon it. You're going to have to roll the boat. you got to top your shoelaces a little bit. But God's not going to abandon you. Oh, that's so good. Romans 13, verse 11. Romans 13, verse 11. This is all the more urgent. You know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up. For our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Every day that goes by is the day you're not going to get back. We're a day close to when Jesus is going to sound the trumpet. He's going to come get us. And we're a day closer. We're getting closer every day. That's a great scripture. I like this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Run from sexual sin. We're running where was told we've been telling us where to run to, uh, how to run, what to run from. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Uh, I remember when I was in basic training in the army, uh, we got our first break, eight weeks into it. We had our first weekend off. So we're planning to go to town and get us a nice room at a hotel and sleep in a normal bed, not have my blow a trumpet early in the morning. And so they show the films. They show those skanky, nasty films of all the, what happens to people that, uh, well, it's just sexual diseases. You know, I'd heard of some, I don't know. So you show this graphic black and white film of men whose parts of their body are rotting off because of sexual sin. And I don't mind telling you, me and a bunch of buddies from Minnesota went through basic together. We got we got out of that room and said, man, I'm going to go to the hotel. I'm going to shut the door and I'm going to lock it. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to go anywhere. I'm going to order room service, and I'm going to go in the bathroom and shut the door, and I, I'm going to be able to sit on a toilet by myself, not with 24 other people, and I'm going to be able to relax. I'm going to sleep in a nice bed tonight and not have, you know, a hundred and something guys snoring and yelling and hollering. I'm going to have some sweet sleep tonight. We were so thankful. And so he's warning you about, you know, sexual sin. It's going to mess you up. Don't do it. Stay away from it. Woo. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse 24. First Corinthians nine, 24. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. Everybody runs. Only one person gets the prize. So run to win. You run to win. Um, one of my daughters ran cross country. She's real good. Run forever. Never lose your breath. And uh, so we were in Oklahoma City. Got to drive two and a half hours away for this cross country run. And uh, there's no there's no bleachers. There's no stands. There's no uh, there's no place to get food. No bathroom. <laughs> so we're out in this cow pasture. It's got a few flags. And you're gonna run through the woods. And it's like a five mile run. They're coming to come back. So we're sitting on the hood of the Suburban, me and my other kids. I'm hungry. I need to go to the bathroom. Well, not here, not now. Just a minute, the race, Linda. So all of a sudden, my daughter was really good at cross country. And so uh, it's her first official race. So they're coming back. So here comes the first kid, and people are starting to applaud. First one's coming back. So, well, Jessica will be up there in the top bunch. She's good. And so 10 runners came back, 20 runners came back, 30 runners came back, 40 runners. And I thought, my daughter must have fallen and broken her leg. She always finished like in the top 10. Where's she at? All of a sudden, here she comes. And she's all out of breath. <gasps> and I thought, and I'm waiting at the finish line. I said, where you been? Where you been? She's down there. You catch my breath. Where you been? They don't, they don't have trophy for, for 50th place or 51st place. They don't have trophy for the first three. Where you been? Well, what she had done, several friends said, hey, will you run with us? Can we run with you? And so they said, sure. And they paced her. Well, they ran slower than she did, and they paced her. 
and she lost. She didn't win a thing. I told that's the last time you want to be my friend. I'll see you after the race. Bring in the house. We'll have some hamburgers. We'll swim in the pool. We'll have a good time, play some games. But when I'm running the race, I'm running to win. I'm not running to be with you. I'm running the race to win. Oh, that was a great lesson that day. Good night. So, um, first Timothy chapter six, verse 11, first Timothy chapter six, verse 11, but you, Timothy are a man of God. So run from all these evil things, run from evil, stay away from it, run from it. Don't just walk, run from evil, pursue righteousness, a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness, pursue righteousness, chase righteousness. You want to chase them, chase a godly life. Chase faith, chase love, chase perseverance, chase gentleness. And that's good. Second Timothy 2, verse 22. Second Timothy 2, verse 22. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of all those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. Enjoy companionship with who? People who fear God like you do. You need to hang with people that are like you, that fear God like you do. They don't fear God, don't hang with them. If they're thirsty, give them water, they're in prison, visit them. If they're hungry, feed them. But don't hang out and spend spare time with them. Oh, the Bible's so clear on that. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily Trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. I told all six of my kids, you're all gifted different. You're going different places. I hope you stay friends the rest of your life, but you're going different places. Your gift to make room for you, bring before kings, make you wealthy. You don't have your sister's gift. You don't have your brother's gift. You don't have my gift. You don't have your mom's gift. You, you have your gift. God gave you a gift, so use it to serve your fellow man. Find out what you're good at. Get real good at it. That's the gift that God gave you. So I really like to run. Run that race. What are you running for? To win? Why are you running? I like running, but I like to win. I want to run to win. So run to win, guys. It's a good thing to do. God bless. Thanks for being with us today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.